right, more on descriptive statistics. This is from chapter six um, in Saul Kind's text. <clears throat> We're talking today about reliability and validity, which you might recall is some territory that we did cover last year uh, in Reuben and Babby. So, uh, but now. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll be, we'll be tying it more closely in with things uh, to do with um, uh, measurement, and that's what a lot of you are going to be doing. You'll be constructing uh, instruments to measure some concept to uh, learn something about a phenomenon out there in the world. So, um, all right, so. Measurements is important because knowing what our data represents is vital uh, for our research to be valid. And uh, uh, <clears throat> often we uh, just jump into writing a um, questionnaire, but we really need to write out a, a narrative paragraph. Um, you know, uh, describing the intent of each question that we're we're um, interested in, in in asking now now it's important to know what the big capital letter research question is but we're not talking about just that necessarily um, we also want to to write out you know a few sentences or a paragraph on each question that we ask just so that we're we're really clear this is what we want to know when we ask that question so, uh, your research instrument can really make or break your project. Uh, an instrument that has proven reliability um, uh, when, for example, facilitated by a researcher might not be when, you know, you just deliver it in pen and paper format or somebody does it online or even, you know, when it's translated into a, a, another language. And so, because those things are pretty important to, um, uh, consider people you know they will answer questions differently face to face and um, uh, <clears throat> and even though you might be able to go through and translate word for word uh, through some mechanism like Google Translate uh, it may not it may not capture the the meaning uh, of of uh, a construct in, in that uh, language that you're wanting to do research in When we're doing quantitative research, um, we often think of of uh, our our measurements having four types, um, and uh, and Salkind calls these nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. There's some other people that may um, call them some some other things. Uh, Particularly nominal is sometimes called a category uh, measure or category scale. So um, <clears throat> sometimes um, uh, ratio, you'll see it called true zero. So, uh, but nominal, as the name implies, is a name. And, uh, and the important thing about um, um, nominal measures is is you um, um, want to be sure that they they um, fit only into one category. So, for example, and one that that I think is is misused a lot is when um, there will be a a race category that includes things like white, black, American Indian, uh, Asian, and then will also include Hispanic, and um, uh, it's um, it's confusing, uh, and and it's because uh, they've attempted to make a nominal variable out of something that is not mutually exclusive. Like say, for example, uh, there's a lot of folks from Cuba uh, or from Puerto Rico who are Black, they're of African uh, descent, uh, 
but they're also Hispanic. They, you know, they speak Spanish. They're part of Spanish culture. Um, uh, same can be s said of uh, uh, Filipinos, for example. Uh, what are they? Are they Asians? Well, they're, they're also um, uh, heavily uh, Spanish-speaking country, so are they Hispanic? Uh, uh, big question mark goes over my head. What category should that be put into? So, uh, <clears throat> uh, color or race, uh, in my mind, ought to be excluded uh, and from ethnicity. And that ought to be a, a different category. And, and again, uh, people can nowadays have multi-race and multi-ethnicity categories. So, and as we, as you can see, just from kind of bumbling around trying to 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 figure out something that's as common as race, it's not a very precise level of of measure measurement. But sometimes it's the only way you can measure something. Um, you can't measure men and women in numbers. So and you can assign a number to represent a male and female, but it's it's just uh, it's just changing one name for another. Now ordinal uh, measurements are um, um, as the name implies, they're levels of things that are in order. So uh, rankings one, two, three, and four, you know the the number one um, uh, top score, say on, on uh, the pretest, uh, is going to be higher than number two, but it may the difference between one and two may not be the same as the difference between two and three. So um, uh, it's where a a um, um, the distance or the gap between the two levels or orders. Uh, or magnitudes um, uh, is not consistent. So, uh, so whereas we may know that, um, for example, a giraffe, um, a whole herd of giraffes here, uh, we can tell that the one on the right is the tallest, and the one in the uh, the second to the right is um, the next, and the and we know that the shortest one is on on the far left. Um, but it's Without pulling out a um, you know some some way to measure them more more clearly, we can just kind of say well you know we can rank them one two three and four in the tallest. We can't say one is twice as tall as as the other without some more information. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that we we can use um, uh, uh, is uh, an ordinal. I mean an interval level. Uh, it's 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 a, the next step up in um, uh, quality, I would say, of um, uh, measurement. Um, so um, so it measures something that uh, we know that if somebody um, you know s s scored 50 on a 100 um, point test, that they're one half of somebody who scored 100 on a 100 point test uh, and that somebody who scored 75 is exactly halfway between those two so uh, the intervals are equal you know kind of like a ruler uh, we know that um, you know six inches is one half of of of, of, of 12 we know that uh, the distance between one and two inches is the same as the difference between eight and nine inches, or ten and eleven, or bet between three and six is the same as six n as nine and twelve, etc. And finally, the 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 ratio level is sometimes it's called um, a, a a true number scale because it because it, it or true zero <coughs> scale because it it, it it um, has a zero within its possibility. So, um, <clears throat> so the, the measure of of it would be absent. So, say for example, you you might think that um, your thermometer, because it has that zero uh, on it there at um, 
though this is a dual thermometer Fahrenheit and Celsius um, that that's a, a a ratio level but it's only interval because there's 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 a, a, a not a, a true zero uh, uh, on that it's it's an arbitrary you know they they set zero on the Celsius scale as um, the point which uh, water freezes well it gets colder than that so now if you're 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 doing your measurements in degrees Kelvin there's there is theoretically a zero temperature in Kelvin but you'll have to talk to physicists about that that's a different different area so so you think about <clears throat> the kind of things that we ask about um, nominal scale up there on the top what is your sex circle one male or female uh, the ordinal scale um, um, the students ranking in uh, on their GPA first 20 you know 44th etc uh, uh, your height in inches so so everybody can be measured in inches nobody has a height of, of zero um, and then finally how many cigarettes do you smoke per day would be a, a ratio level uh, it's, it's a true number people can smoke you know 45 cigarettes a day <coughs> or they may abstain completely and, uh, and, and score a true zero um, uh, <clears throat> so this brief table here will kind of outline what what those um, points are um, um, A ratio level, level contains an absolute zero. It has equidistant points. It can be used for ranking, and and um, and it's 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 a category. You know, uh, five cigarettes a day is a category, as is zero. So, um, intervals lacks the absolute zero, but it is equidistance. It is in a rank, and again, it can be used for a category. Ordinal lacks absolute zero. Uh, the points are not necessarily equally um, spaced, uh, but it is ranked. Um, one, um, um, uh, good is better than bad, and better is better than good, and best is the better than better than anyway. And it can also be put into categories. Finally, the only thing you you can do with nominal. Um, uh, data is is use them uh, to cate categorize. So, if you think about you know your kind of nested set thing, you know ratio covers all the possibilities of levels of me me measurement. Interval is the next highest. Ordinal is is the next, and then nominal is the is the least. And uh, so, um, um, when when you're thinking about gathering your data. Um, you know, it's a good idea to to measure at the highest level that you can, because uh, uh, you can always uh, change um, ratio level data into into some other kind of of, of measure. So, uh, if you if you measure um, a number of cigarettes a day, you can change that into number of, of um, uh, <clears throat> uh, into some sort of a, of a of a of a ranked data you know it's like this person smokes the most this person smokes the least you can also make it into categories this is a heavy smoker this is a moderate smoker this is a light smoker this is an abstainer those sorts of things so whereas you can't go the other way So in the text, uh, Salkane points out that that the scores that we observe uh, when we do research um, uh, are simply the observed score. They're not necessarily the true score. And um, um, so, uh, for example, you 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 take a test in. Uh, 
my class. Uh, you may score a certain score, uh, which I can observe, but it may not reflect how much you actually know about the the um, the um, uh, chapter that you've you've just taken a test on. Um, uh, <clears throat> so there's a um, um, Reliability equals true score divided by true score plus the error. Uh, it's an interesting concept. Um, uh, error is always going to be part of taking um, observations, and uh, uh, and statistically they 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 account for error in, in a lot of different ways. And and so when we're on the data gathering side of of um, of gathering information, we um, uh, we need to do whatever it is we can do to um, eliminate um, uh, error in our test taking. So, uh, and that's where reliability comes in. Um, you know, we've got uh, four kind of um, of um, types of reliability that we think about when we construct measurements. There's uh, Test retest, which measures stability, parallel forms, reliability, which um, measures, you know, whether two different measures are measuring the equivalent thing. Uh, internal consistency reliability, whether kind of all measures are pointing at the same construct. And um, and then finally, when we're we're um, using um, um, multiple sources of information that those sources agree so uh, so test retest so you think about test retest you know it's it's um, you think about the, the, the bathroom scales um, um, <clears throat> um, you know they 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 tend to um, uh, give the same results every time you uh, get on them um, and um, parallel forms of of, of um, reliability is when you weigh yourself at home, and then when you go in for your exam, you you get weighed there, and so you can you can um, um, you can compare the two, um, uh, <clears throat> depending on the quality of your 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 scales. You may discover that you, you do not actually have reliable scales uh, because they may not be accurate, even though they they consistently measure the same thing every time you get on the scales. So uh, they they may just be wrong, and uh, or 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 it could be that they're they're um, um, uh, they don't do test retest. It could be you get on the bathroom scale uh, as you know my scales at home do. Uh, uh, you get on them and then step off of them, step right back on them, and I'll weigh, you know, two pounds more, two, two pounds less sometimes, and uh, uh, so they're, they're not consistent, uh, so they're not reliable at all. Um, internal consistency, so so if, say for example you have um, um, a depression inventory or, or a PTSD scale or something like that, each item should correlate in a, and there's a statistical formula for it, uh, with with the final score of that, and um, uh, inter-rater reliability um, is the kind of uh, thing that really is important if you're um, uh, uh, gathering information from from case records. You know, you might have, uh, you know, you might just be going through case records and and uh, um, you know writing down. A person's diagnosis as an observation, but you have to be be real careful that the um, the various therapists who are making those uh, diagnoses or the psychologists who are making those diagnoses, uh, clinicians, etc., uh, are, are are really doing their diagnosis in the same way. They you know they may not be rating um, uh, uh, people the same. Now, we, 
when we when we test our instruments for uh, reliability say we've got 10 items that we put together in the uh, 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 in, in our burnout inventory or in our uh, 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 volunteer satisfaction inventory etc uh, <clears throat> we, we can we can conduct a Cronbach's uh, Kron, uh, alpha um, uh, on on that and 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 um, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, that would be referring to our internal consistency and um, um, and you know in, in the R program you know there's a there's a real easy way to to do um, uh, reliability co coefficients using using the psych package and uh, so if anybody wants to do uh, a rea reality test <laughs> a reliability test which is also a reality test um, on their um, uh, questionnaires or uh, scales that they develop uh, I can certainly work with you to figure that out test retest you know if 60 percent of the time it it um, tests the same thing. Uh, it's generally considered to be reliable. Uh, Eighty-five percent of the of the therapists are diagnosing you know a person with depression as being depressed. Then you know you're 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 you're, you're kind of okay. Uh, but real re reliability is only only one 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 piece of it. You know you you could have. Uh, um, you know, a couple of of um, uh, raters who who don't really understand the concept, and so even though they they rate something in high agreement, they may be rating it consistently wrong. So, um, so some some very practical things that we can do um, to make sure that our our um, tests are reliable is uh, <clears throat> make sure that we've got you know, good instructions that are uh, are standardi standardized, so that everybody gets the same set of instructions delivered in the same way. If you get somebody a a uh, if you give one group a, a set of written instructions and another group uh, a set of verbal instructions, then you had another group uh, both verbal and written instructions. You know, you're starting to monkey around with reliability. Um, uh, another good way to increase your reliability is to have more items. Is um, um, if you are doing a survey and you have an item in there that you're not really sure what you're going to do with, it's probably a good idea just to get rid of it. Um, having one, having too many items in a survey. Uh, causes reliability problems. Having irrelevant items in it can also cause problems. Um, sometimes making the the um, survey easier uh, or more difficult to to take um, can heighten reliability. Sometimes if something's too easy, somebody won't take it seriously, and they'll they'll just kind of skim over it. And conversely, if something's too difficult, um, it's going to, um, um, you know, you know, it's going to skew your results. People who may, perhaps are are more highly educated or have have a higher degree of focus. So, um, <clears throat> and you want to minimize uh, any external factors, and 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 those can be uh, quite significant. Um, uh, you know, if you're if you're um, 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 you know, handing around a, a a set of surveys for people to fill out, um, and um, uh, say it's at at a uh, uh, a seminar, and and you just kind of hand them out with the um, uh, 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 continuing education credits or something like that. You know, people are going to just rush through them, uh, or, or perhaps not do them at all. So.
validity. Validity is is uh, <clears throat> is more abstract than reliability, and it 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 asks questions about our um, our uh, survey instruments that that you know help us determine if we're asking the appropriate questions or we're in the appropriate way if the kind of information we're going to be getting back is going to be meaningful and useful. Essentially does the test measure what we you know what we set out to measure in the um, in the in the in the question the research question. Um, uh, <clears throat> Historically there's been the three main types of, of validity content validity criteria. Uh, uh, validity which can either predict or be concurrent and then finally, construct, and we'll go over those all briefly. Um, <clears throat> content validity um, <clears throat> is often the kind of of um, of, uh, of um, validity where you, where somebody with an expertise in a topical area will look at a at a survey and say, you know, I'm, we're 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 covering the full range of 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 um, what we should cover about this particular topic, and um, um, criterion validity. Um, um, <clears throat> so again, going back to to your 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 test of um, of um, of. Um, of um, depression, for example, uh, you know, if concurrent validity um, uh, as a measure might be, you know, if if our measure picks up that somebody is is depressed, and consistently when we have a psychiatrist or a, or a clinical social worker conduct a, a therapeutic interview, a diagnostic interview that they come to the same conclusion, then we would say it has concurrent validity. Um, um, uh, predictive validity is um, when you do a test right now that predicts some future um, uh, performance on a similar measure. So, so you take your SATs, they're predictors of how well you're going to do uh, in college. Um, now, construct validity is, is can be sometimes kind of difficult to wrap your your head around, but it's those it's it's uh, things we 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 measure that um, indirectly measure something else, like like aggression. Now we can we can count when somebody has an aggressive act, uh, but uh, that's not really uh, a measure of, of aggression, um, or hope, or intelligence, and uh, uh, we we you, you look at the uh, various intelligence tests, and and they're they're um, usually uh, uh, different types of questions that re you know require recall of of commonly known information, the ability to interact with with information and produce new information, or those sorts of things. So uh, uh, it's a construct. It's a it's it's a group of, of of variables that are related. You look at the diagnostic manuals. They're they're, they're all constructs, and and um, we observe different things. You know, suicidality or self harm behavior, or a pattern of 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 uh, uh, persistent um, um, <clears throat> uh, fear of of. Of, of a loss of re relationship, etc., and we sort of go, oh, maybe this person has borderline personality disorder. So, um, a lot of relationship between construct validity and, and some clinical work that we do. So, we, when we develop cons constructs, uh, we want them to highly correlate with with behaviors that we. Um, um, uh, Say are related to what we're trying to measure, and to not correlate with with unrelated behaviors. So, 
Um, content validity can be your weekly quiz. Uh, you know, the um, the tests are developed to uh, assess one's com competence with uh, you know a certain body of information. Uh, criterion validity again, going back to that idea that they they are concurrent or predictive. Um, uh, the uh, something like your LMSW exam uh, is going to kind of predict whether or not you're going to be a successful uh, or competent social worker. Um, and then finally, construct validities are those kind of things like empathy scales, self-esteem measures, depression inventories, PTSD scales, some of those kind of things. So. Falkine refers to them as the kissing cousins. Um, um, you know they're 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 important to be uh, taking into consideration with your um, uh, scale or your measurement construction, your survey construction. Um, um, but just because you you create a test or a survey instrument doesn't mean that it's a reliable test doesn't mean that it's a valid test. So there's there are certain steps that we need to include, uh, like um, um, doing a Chrome box alpha on our, our scale. Um, uh, tests can be reliable, but not valid, I mean, meaning that people will take the test over and over and get the same results, but they're not measuring what, what we want them to measure. Um, uh, con but conversely, a test is never valid uh, until it's reliable, uh, because it has to it has to do what it's it's intended to do um, consistently. So, again, going back to our our um, bathroom scales, um, um, if that bathroom scale is is reliable. Uh, uh, we don't know that it's valid until we get get some confirmation from from uh, another source. Uh, in this case, it's you know the the standardized medical scale, and um, uh, and quite often the bathroom scales are are, are not not even reliable, uh, and uh, because they you know they vary. But sometimes when they're when they consistently measure the same the same thing, they're still not reliable because they're consistently measuring things wrong. So, um, um, creating research instruments is um, uh, it's not as easy as just simply ty you know typing out ten ten items on a questionnaire and, and and handing them out to a group of people. There's 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 a considerable number of of steps involved in order to do it right. So that's enough for today.